Oxford Bookworms, Stage One. The Elephant Man by Tim Vickery. Chapter One: The Creature in the Shop. My name is Doctor Frederick Treves. I am a doctor at the London Hospital. One day in 1884, I saw a picture in the window of a shop near the hospital. I stopped in front of the shop, and looked at the picture. At first, I felt interested. Then I felt angry. Then afraid. It was a horrible, ugly picture. There was a man in the picture, but he did not look like you and me. He did not look like a man. He looked like an elephant. I read the writing under the picture. It said, "Come in and see the Elephant Man." Two pence. I opened the door and went in. There was a man in the shop. He was a dirty man in an old coat with a cigarette in his mouth. "What do you want?" he asked. "I'd like to see the Elephant Man, please," I said. The man looked at me angrily. Well, you can't," he said. "The shop's closing now. You can come back tomorrow." "I'm sorry," I said, "but I would like to see him now. I have no time tomorrow. I have a lot of work to do. But I can give you more than two pence." The man looked at me carefully. Then he took the cigarette out of his mouth, and smiled. With his yellow teeth. All right, sir," he said. "Give me twelve pence then." I gave him money, and he opened a door at the back of the shop. We went into a little room. The room was cold and dark, and there was a horrible smell in it. A creature sat on a chair behind a table. I say, a creature. Because it was not a man or a woman, like you or me. The creature did not move or look at us. It sat very quietly on the chair, in the cold, dark, dirty room, and looked at the table. The creature had a cloth over its head, because of the cold. On the table in front of it, there was a dead flower. Stand up," said the shopkeeper loudly. The creature stood up slowly. It took the old cloth off its head, and put it on the chair. I looked at the creature, and felt sad. I am a doctor, so I know a lot about accidents and ill people. I see horrible, ugly things every day. But this creature. This thing was the worst of all. There were no men or women in the hospital like him. He wore some old trousers, but no shirt, coat, or shoes, so I could see his body very well. His head was the most interesting thing. It was very, very big, like an enormous bag with a lot of books in it. The head did not have much hair, and there was another bag of brown, dirty skin at the back of it. This skin came down below his neck. I could not see one of his eyes very well, because a lot of skin came down in front of his face too. An enormous red tooth came out of his mouth, under his nose. It looked like an elephant's tooth. The mouth and nose were like holes in the face. The face could not smile or laugh or look angry or sad, because the skin could not move. It was dead, like an elephant's face. There were more bags of dirty skin on the front and back of the creature's body. These bags came down to his legs. The right arm was enormous, 
and there were bags of skin on it too. The right hand was like a man's foot, but the left hand, the left arm and the left hand, were beautiful. The left arm had wonderful skin, and the fingers of the left hand were long and beautiful. It was like a young woman's hand. Walk, Merrick," said the shopkeeper angrily. "Come on, quickly, move." He hit the creature with his hand. Slowly, the creature walked across the room, but he could not walk well. His legs were very big and fat, and he had a bad back. He could not walk far without a stick. All right, thank you," I said. Let him sit down. I don't want to see any more. I felt ill, and the smell in the room was very bad. Yes, sir," said the shopkeeper. "Sit down, Merrick." We went out of the room and closed the door. The shopkeeper smiled at me with his yellow teeth. "Wonderful, sir, isn't it?" he said. "The best elephant man in England." Hundreds of people come to see him, you know. Hundreds. I take him all over the country. I do. Yes, very interesting. I said. Can I sit down? Yes, sir. Of course. Here's a chair. He looked at me, smiling. Would you like a glass of water, sir? Yes, please. I said. Then I looked at the things in the dirty shop. There were two or three bad apples, and some old black bananas. That was all. Ah,、uh, no, no, thank you. I'm all right. Did. Did you, did you call the creature Merrick? That's right, sir. Joseph Merrick, the best elephant man in England. I take him all over the country, you know. Lots of people want to see him. Yes, I see. Do you get a lot of money? Well, sometimes we do, sir. Yes, but it's difficult, you see, sir, because of the police. The police don't like us, you see, sir. So we can't stay in a town very long. We usually move every week. Yes, I see. Well, anyway, Mister、uh, Silcock, sir, Simon Silcock. Yes, well, Mister Silcock, I'm a doctor at the London Hospital. My name is Doctor Treves. I think this、uh, this man, Joseph Merrick, is very interesting, and I would like to see him at the hospital. I want to look at him more carefully. You see. Yes, sir. I see. But how can he get to the hospital? It's going to be difficult. Why, man? The hospital's not far from here. Well, yes, sir. I know. But you see, Merrick can't walk very well. He needs help. You can come with him. Do you want more money? Is that it? Well, yes, sir, I do. But you see, people are afraid of him too. In the road, little boys always run after him and hit him, and the police get angry because people are afraid. Sometimes they take us to prison. I see. I said. Well, how can he come to the hospital then? Bring a cab, sir," said Silcock. "You can take him to the hospital in a cab." Chapter Two: The Card. So next day at seven o'clock, I came to the shop in a cab. There were not very many people in the road, because it was early in the morning. In November. It is dark at seven o'clock in the morning, and I could not see the shop very well. I waited five minutes. A postman walked past. 
Then the door of the shop opened, and the creature, Merrick, came out. I could not see his face or his body. He had an enormous black hat on his head, like a big box. A grey cloth came down from the hat in front of his face. There was a hole in the cloth in front of his eyes. He could see out of the hole, but I could not see in. He wore a long black coat, too. The coat began at his neck and ended at his feet, so I could not see his arms, his body, or his legs. On his feet, he wore big shoes like old bags. He had a stick in his left hand, and he walked very slowly. I opened the door of the cab and got out. Good morning, Mr. Merrick, I said. Can you get in? Help my upper steps, he said. I- I'm sorry, I said. I don't understand. For a minute, he stood by the door of the cab and said nothing. Then he hit the cab with his stick. Steps, he said loudly. Help me up the steps. Then I understood. There were three steps up into the cab, and he could not get up them. Yes, I see. I'm sorry, I said. Let me help you. I took his left hand and began to help him. My right hand was behind his back. I felt very strange. His left hand was like a young woman's, but his back under the coat was horrible. I could feel the bags of old skin on his back under the coat. He put one enormous foot on the first step, and then he stopped. After a minute, he moved his second foot slowly. Then he stopped and waited again. Hello, sir. Can I help you? I looked behind me. It was the postman, and behind him, I could see three young boys. One of the boys laughed. The postman smiled. Is the gentleman ill? He asked. I thought quickly. Yes, but this is a lady, not a gentleman. I'm a doctor, and she's ill. Take her hand so I can help her better. The postman took Merrick's left hand, and I helped him with two hands from behind. Slowly, very slowly, Merrick went up the steps and into the cab. One boy was very near the cab. He called to his friends. Come and see this, boys! A fat lady in a black coat! And look at that enormous hat! The boys laughed. They were very near the cab too now. I closed the door quickly. Thank you, I said to the postman. That's all right, sir, he said. She's a strange lady, sir, isn't she? She's ill, that's all, I said quickly. We're going to the hospital. Goodbye, and thank you. The cab drove down the road to the hospital. I looked at Merrick. That was difficult, wasn't it? I said. At first he said nothing, but then he spoke. His voice was very strange, but I listened to him carefully, and I could understand him. The steps were very difficult, he said, but most things are difficult for me. Yes. I said, "Nothing is easy for you, is it?" No, he said. He was very quiet for a minute. Then he said, "Who are you, sir?" Who am I? Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Doctor Treves. Here, this is my card.
I gave him a card with my name on. Then I thought, that was no good. This man can't read. But Merrick took the card and looked at it very carefully. Then he put it in his trousers pocket. I did not talk to him very much at the hospital. I looked at his head and arms and legs and body very carefully. Then I wrote the important things about him in a little book. A nurse helped me. Merrick looked at her sometimes, but she did not smile at him or talk to him. I think she was afraid of him. I think Merrick was afraid too, because he was very quiet. At four o'clock, I took him back to the shop in a cab. The next day, I looked in the shop window again, but the picture was not there.